<laughs> bring Carmen in a distracted way. Come on, man. I'll yeah, Oh, okay. he deserves it. Yeah, you're the smart one. <laughs> Welcome to the August 14th, 2024 Sutter Buttes Flood Control Agency. May we have roll call, please. Matt Conant. Present. Arm Baines. Present. Bill Connolly. Here. Bo Shepard. Here. Mark Boomgarden. Here. Wade Kirchner. Here. Charlie Hoppin. Here. Gary Marler. Here. Mike Morris. Here. Chris Middle. Here. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance led by um, Mr. Matt Conan. Salute. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we'll move to the public comment section. Members of the public will be allowed to address the Sutter Butte Flood Control Agency's Board of Directors on items of interest to the public that are within the subject matter jurisdiction of the board. Any member of the audience who may wish to bring a matter before the board that has not been placed on the agenda may do so at this time. However, state law provides that no action may be taken on any item not appearing on the posted agenda. Do we have any public comment? You? Neil Hayes not saying no. <laughs> All right, no public comment. Next item is the consent calendar. Consent calendar groups together those items which are considered non-controversial or for which prior policy direction has been given to staff and it require only routine action by the board. The chair will advise the audience that the matters may be adopted in total by one motion. However, the board may at its option or upon the request of a member of the public consider any matter separately. Does anybody on the board want an item removed from the consent calendar? Move to approve one through five. Second. Second. Have a motion to approve and a second. All those in favor, or do I need a roll call? Thank you. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Consent calendar is passed unanimously. Move to informational and possible approval items. I'm trying to keep up with uh, Mr. Kimmelshu here as far as pace. Um, presentation in the and the filing of our monthly financial report. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So this report covers through uh, June 30th of uh, 2024, which is the end of the fiscal year. But of course, we have a uh, an accrual period uh, that lasts for two months after that we're currently in. So our ending working capital uh, was 26.4 million. Uh, estimated to date, giving pending uh, 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 financials is uh, 29.3 million. Uh, our revenue, so we, we did max out for uh, uh, the 23-24 fiscal year, uh, our, our uh, operational uh, operating budget uh, uh, revenue, 750,000. Should still expect uh, uh, interest to post within the next few weeks, though. And then for the capital revenue, uh, about six point, almost 6.4 million to date. Uh, and then uh, uh, including pending charges or pending revenue though, we're expecting uh, about uh, 10.1 million. So a difference of 3.68 million. That 3.68 million could be, uh, best be divided up uh, between capital payments uh, that we're expecting. Those pending amounts uh, amount to about 1.8 million. Uh, the assessment revenue though, uh, which actually should have posted uh, uh, for June, but I think they're actually posting it during the accrual period, even though we had received it, uh, 1.9 million. Estimated expenditures uh, to date, you, you can see here, uh, about, let's see, paid expenditures about 3.8 million, uh, and then about 4.4 .4 million in, uh, in pending expenditures to date. Our debt service payment uh, due in October, uh, we're actually processing that right now. We did receive the, uh, uh, an official invoice from a uh, U.S. bank, and uh, we're trying to process that so it'll be paid well before uh, the deadline of October 1st. So, oh, what happened there? That's glitching on me. Uh, Funding agreements, uh, so just continuation of uh, uh, UFERT, uh, working towards closeout with that. Uh, uh, WCB and CDFW grants, which there are uh, a few, um, we're just continuing 
uh, to process uh, uh, packages for that. Uh, and we just, we're sort of in the process right now of submitting a number of uh, packages for the second quarter of, uh, Q20, uh, of uh, 2024, calendar year. And then uh, uh, School for Tutor, uh, we had uh, closed out uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, going forward, uh, the annual audit uh, is underway. Annual assessment administration, uh, uh, so I, I guess the Wilden submission of uh, assessment rolls to Sutter and Butte counties, right? And then next step is uh, preparation of direct bills the, for the direct payments. And finalizing uh, Frau Leifa's uh, reimbursement process. Well, doing it again. Finalizing for, uh, Frau Leifa's reimbursement process and accounting for costs and setting up a reimbursement process with, uh, with that. I'll open up for questions. Any questions? Any questions from the public? No public? Looks good to us then. Thank you. Thank you. All right. That presentation and file program slash project update from Mr. Bissett. Hey, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. And members of the board, welcome. Um, so we have, oh, I'm going to wait to the slide. Yep. Yeah, next slide, please. So uh, on Feather River West Levy Project 1, what I want to highlight this month is um, the board just approved the contract with Lund Construction on the consent uh, agenda for the relief well repairs. So we're going to go ahead and award that contract, get those contracts signed, get bonds and insurance, and begin uh, the process of repairing those relief well manhole enclosures uh, with Lund Construction. So we're excited about getting that done. On uh, Feather River West Levy Project 2, so that's our Tudor Flood Risk Reduction Project. Um, we are at 100% design status right now. Uh, we're w awaiting comments from our uh, agency reviewers. Uh, we're also in the process of getting our 408 approval to do our cultural resources testing. We're planning to do that work in October if not sooner, uh, but that's, that's kind of the plan right now to get it done in October. And then uh, we're still advancing all of our environmental permits for the project. So we're starting to also coordinate with uh, Sutter County on the, on the eventual construction project. We're coordinating with the landowner on access. Uh, so we're getting everything ready for construction of that levy improvement next year. The, the, the plan is to bid the project this winter, you know, kind of end of this year, open bids early next year, and hopefully have a, a, a contract to take to this board in probably uh, February or March of next year, award that contract and get going. So we're excited. Uh, Sutter Bypass East Levy Repair, that project is at a 30% design status. That's the 5.2 miles along the, the Sutter Bypass. Not sure what's happening with our screen today, but something's happening. But anyways, the, the big news is that, you know, I informed the board uh, maybe two or three weeks ago now that uh, FEMA had selected our project for funding through their BRIC project. Uh, grant program. So we're coordinating closely with Cal OES's consultant, Haggerty uh, consultants. They're the ones who help pull all the applications together in California to submit to FEMA. Uh, the good news is, you know, FEMA has identified our project for funding. The bad news is the process, the schedule for implementing that funding could take two to three years um, from now. So what we're expecting to hear is we're expecting to hear back from FEMA within a year on any additional questions they may have about our application, our project. Assuming we satisfy all of those questions, if any, um, then we would move forward into getting into an agreement with FEMA for funding. We're also going to be meeting with DWR to talk about this program, this funding program through FEMA. Uh, we'll talk about additional money that would be necessary to really fully build out that 5.2 mile improvement because right now our cost estimates are higher than the 50 million that FEMA is looking to award the project. Uh, so we're going to coordinate with DWR to uh, supply some additional funding for that project through event through future uh, budgets. 
So we have a meeting set up in the next couple of weeks. So it's all good news um, there. Uh, in the meantime, we're advancing our design. We're going to take it to a 65% design level. And that's when we can submit to the Central Valley Board for the encroachment permit, which also kicks off the 408 review process by the Army Corps. Next slide, please. Michael? Yes, sir. In the past, we've, we managed to do things real quick, push and, and get the funding and everything. Is there any way we can try to fast track any of this? You know, we're going to try. We've, we've seen our history. Yeah, we met with, like I said, the uh, consultant to Cal OES who, uh, you know, works with FEMA a lot. And what they said was there's, there was a project selected in 2020 for funding that still hasn't been funded, and it's four years now. So FEMA's been very slow to make those awards through their program. They're trying to do better, and there's a lot of political uh, heat on them to move that money out to make good use of those funds because it's all risk reduction uh, work. Uh, so we're doing everything we can. So the, uh, our call today resulted in Haggerty's going to go back to talk to their contacts at FEMA to see what can be done to advance that process. Okay, thank you. Yep. Just thought I would. Yeah, no, we're going to do everything we can to move it along. Absolutely. Michael, um, one quick question. So I know that NOAA rejected our request for the money for the sediment removal. What's next, <laughs> or is there a next? That's a different slide, so I'll get to oh, that. Oh, okay, yeah. you haven't got there yet. All right. No, I haven't gotten there yet. Sorry, guys. No, no worries. Uh, so this, we're still on levy improvement projects. So this is for the next, this one is City of Orville levy repair. So that's that one mile project that we're assisting the city to, you know, advance to get, they've done initial investigations through some funding from DWR back in 2012 to 2015. Um, they, it needs additional money to continue with geotechnical investigations to better understand the deficiencies and to come up with remediation methods in a project, essentially. Um, so we haven't had any luck on the state side looking for state funding because of the budget situation. We did submit to the Army Corps under their pilot program uh, to, for a feasibility study, so we're still waiting to hear from the Corps and from what we hear from our federal lobbyists is the Corps should be releasing those determinations very soon. So it was held up by the Office of Management and Budget in D.C. For whatever reason, I don't know all the details, they held up a bunch of Army Corps projects. Um, but now they're starting to roll out. So we should hear from the Corps within the next week or so is what we're hearing, uh, whether or not the city was successful. So as soon as I hear something, I'll put that out to the board. I got one, one question on that. So close your ears, Bill. Anyway, um, so, you know, Orville's a disadvantaged community. Are we emphasizing that point a lot in oh, yeah. our application? Yes. Okay. That's important. Yep. Thanks. Yeah, and we just received our first reimbursement from the city. So we submitted our, you know, our invoice for our time because we're getting reimbursed for our assistance. So we just uh, received a, a check back from them on that. So just good partnership going on with the city of Oroville. Uh, for our federal project, uh, the five mile south of Tudor, I mean south of Star Bend, the Tudor Road to Cypress Avenue, um, we're working on the, the punchless repair project. So that contract was awarded last month by the board to TNS Construction. We're holding a pre-con tomorrow, a pre-construction meeting with the contractor. Tomorrow we'll get their schedule and a better understanding of how they're going to complete their work. And um, so we're excited to get that project moving forward. We're coordinating closely with Feather Water District on that project. We're also um, coordinating with the Corps on the federal crediting side. The, the Corps is reviewing all of our credit applications um, to, to ensure that we get all all the money that we put forward through the Feather River West Levy project and the, the Federal Five Mile Project, we get reimbursed or we get our credit for that. Uh, and they've been approving all of our requests, essentially. So that's been really positive. Uh, and we should be getting the uh, Project Partnership Agreement Amendment completed later this year. I think it's going to go to the Central Valley Board in either September or, or October. 
and then we'll be able to sign it ourselves in Sajafka and, and move that forward. So all good news on our federal project. Next slide, please. On uh, o OWA Robinson's Riffle project, so we have the $1.1 million planning grant. So that work is getting close to completion. So we have a draft report that's under internal review right now. Um, we'll be coordinating with DWR on it. Basically, it identifies all of the projects uh, that sh could occur within that region that's been coordinated with all the stakeholders like CDFW and DWR and other local stakeholders. Um, I'm going to have Chris make a presentation on that study, that, that report, uh, in the next couple of months so that the board can really identify, you know, what's out there, what, what we're looking at completing into the future, or what, the, what the roadmap is for projects up in the Orville Wildlife Area. The first project, the, the project that all of our stakeholders have identified to advance um, is currently, the design has just kicked off under that $2.1 million CDFW grant. Basically, it's right at the Robinson's Riffle. Um, I'm gonna that'll be something Chris talks about in more detail also. Uh, so we'll have maps and, and identification, but essentially uh, creating, uh, removing some, some Riffle material uh, augmenting with uh, the, the material that is good for salmon uh, and also creating side channels for, for salmon uh, to, to improve upon and, and help their, uh, the health of the salmon population. So exciting project, really getting a lot of support from our, not only our funders, but all the, the stakeholders in that, that world, that environmental uh, world. So good things happening there. We're also looking at identifying construction funding opportunities for that project. So we're gonna be applying for some grant money to advance what that design project unfolds. We'll be able to apply for uh, construction funding. Also up in the Thermolito area or the o OWA area is the Thermolito After Bay Boat Ramp and Campground Project. So we have the, that's fully funded through CDFW and the Wildlife Conservation Board. Uh, we're advancing towards uh, design, bid documents later this year. We'll go out to bid on that project. So we're improving the existing boat ramp out there right at Thermolito After Bay, we're, we're gonna be building a brand new two boat uh, ramp launch uh, facility. Um, and we're also creating 25 campsites in that area along with other associated improvements. So it'll be a really exciting project. We're gonna look to put that out to bid almost at the same time as our Tudor flood risk reduction project. Um, so it'll be later this year, opening bids early next year, awarding a contract, and then starting construction in the spring. And we're gonna look to do a, a, a groundbreaking ceremony for that project, as well as probably the Tudor uh, flood risk reduction project. So there's gonna be a lot of construction happening next year uh, from this agency. And then lastly on this slide is the sediment removal projects. Yes, unfortunately, NOAA uh, did not select our grant. We've set up a meeting with the reviewers of the applications to get better or to get feedback on why we weren't successful so that we can be you know, successful in the future. That meeting is set up for in the next week or two, I think. Can't remember the exact day, but we do have that scheduled and uh, we'll get some more information. We also have the, the Bureau of Reclamation grant application for the same project. We're not as, we're not as, uh, we weren't feeling as good about this one as, as the NOAA grant, so we don't know where, where this will come in, but it's still another opportunity that we wanted to pursue. So if, as soon as we hear about that grant, uh, we'll let the board know, but that's probably gonna be later this year before we hear anything. Michael, the Yuba County also got rejected by NOAA at the same time, correct? The Yuba Water Agency. Yeah, for their for their project. Exactly. And the yep. two kind of almost or have a synergy between the two. They of them. do, and I'm coordinating with Willie, the general manager there, to 
talk about you know when we go after additional funding to see how we could really link our projects together and you know to see what we can do to better both uh, sides for our funding requests. Are they going after the same federal other grant as we are for that? I don't know. I don't know if they are. Yeah, Chris, do you happen to know if Yuba Water Agency is going after the Bureau of Rec? Okay. Yeah, we're we're not sure. We don't usually broadcast the grants we're going after. No, I know. I just, just <laughs> we curious. try to minimize the the competition. Uh, next, oh, that's it. Uh, FEMA remapping of Sutter County. So we did hear back from FEMA on our you know remapping application, um, and we have a meeting set up. We're with Sutter County, so I'm glad Neil's here today. So, um, and also I believe they've invited uh, Yuba City and uh, some others to attend this meeting. And um, one of the big, not concerns that they have, but the question that they want answered is how does our mapping application affect like the opposite side of the river? Um, does it change the design water surface elevations or the, the you know, the, the elevations in the river that everybody's using to uh, certify their levees? So we're having that conversation our application was coordinated with Yuba County's consultant, so we're not concerned about that. We just have to uh, tell the story about all the work that was done going into this application. So anyways, the good news is that, you know, we are having a meeting with them. So they are actively reviewing the package, advancing it. Um, so we're, we feel pretty good about that. Also, uh, we're communicating with, uh, oh, there's a new, Another project here, this Feather River side channel project. So uh, the Sutter County Resource District received a grant through the Wildlife Conservation Board to advance this project. It's just downstream from the confluence of the Feather and the Yuba. And they've been coordinating with our agency, you know, before they even submitted their grant application because they... Number one, they wanted to see if we had any concerns, and obviously we did because that's, you know, bringing in more water closer to the levee, perhaps. We so we were concerned about that. So they actually included some costs in their grant application for our agency to review their plans, whatever they come up with, to ensure that whatever they're proposing does not negatively impact our recently improved levee system. Uh, so that's good. So we're in close coordination and we're going to get funded for our review time um, for that project. So we'll be coordinating with that agency, taking a funding agreement back to this board, um, most likely in October is what I'm thinking, so that we get reimbursed for the time we spend reviewing their the chair. plans. Uh, Michael, um, this Feather River side channel project um, you said it was downstream from the confluence? Correct. Is it on the uh, east or west side? It's on the west side. It's on the west side. Yeah. So there's some side channels out there already. They want to they improve those so that there's better water flow through those areas. So when the river gets a little bit higher out of the banks, not, not yet on the levees, but there's, there's, there's channels in those areas that would allow salmon to migrate through. I'm just trying to picture this. You're talking about between the confluence and Shanghai Bend? Pretty much, yeah. That's pretty much the limits of what their target area is. Okay. Yeah, so we'll have, once they start putting pen to paper and they have something that we can show the board, we'll bring it back to the board to, to show. And maybe we have them, their consultant come in and make a presentation to this board also. Um, the other bullet here, so, you know, it's, we're in August and it's been hot, but uh, I, I don't know if the board's aware, but there's been a lot of talk now of well, last year was an El Nino year. This year's looking like it's a La Nina forecast. And, you know, who knows what that means, right? So I just wanted to put that up here. We're going to you know, obviously keep a close watch on what the predictions are for the weather forecast for this coming winter. Um, La Nina typically means it's a little bit drier for our area, but there's been La Ninas where we've gotten a lot of rain and we've gotten a lot of snow up in the mountains. So 
it's really a crapshoot, but I just, you know, I have taken this off for the summer. I'm putting it back on. This is the new prediction. We're going to talk about it and, you know, keep a close eye as we move into the winter. And our next board meeting is in sept it's scheduled for September 11th. Right now we don't have action items. So if we don't have any action items for the board to review and take action on, I'll probably look to cancel that meeting. So as of right now, we don't have anything. So I'm gonna, with that, I'm going to turn it back to the chair for any questions. Thank you, Mr. Brissett. Any further questions? Yes, Mr. Hoffman. Yeah, no, it's, to be honest, Charlie, no, I haven't done that yet. And, you know, Neil's here today, and uh, I'll talk to Neil about that. And we're here to help in any projects that they have that would be in our, our you know, expertise. Um, so I'll... Okay. Neil and I will have a conversation about that. Any other questions? Anybody from the public got a question? With that, we will adjourn this meeting.